Have you ever owned a busted car? Like, come on now, you know what I'm talking about. I remember my first car that I ever owned. It was a 92 Chevy Blazer. I used to call it the Blaze and it was busted. Like in the comments below, type yes if you ever own a busted car, especially if it was your first one. Now, I, I do have a question on that though. Who's, whoever, whose first car was super nice? You had a nice new car for your first car. Type yes in the comments. And just to let you know, if you type yes, everyone else who had a busted car hates you, just to let you know. I'm joking, we don't hate each other at church, but we do a little bit. Okay, anyways, but, but, but my car, my first car was busted, man. You didn't even need a key to start the thing. It was a two-door mini SUV and the passenger window didn't roll down and the AC didn't work. And so during the summer months, I would have to drive with my shirt off just so I wouldn't die from, from, from a heat stroke. I mean, it was insane. You could hear me coming from miles away. You can follow my, my track because there's so much black smoke that would come out of my muffler when I would drive. Needless to say, my first car was busted. Now, I didn't really know anything about cars when I first got this car. I didn't know cars needed, needed oil changes, you know, things like that. And the craziest part though, when I would drive my car, if I would, I would have to hold on to my steering wheel very tight because if I would let it go or I just even loosely let it go, my car would just turn directly to the right. It would just veer right um, real hard. And I thought it was just something my car did. I didn't know any better. I just thought it was something my car did until one I was riding with someone and that happened. He said, man, your alignment is jacked up. Your car alignment is jacked up. So I would drive my car with it going every other direction but straight unless I held on as tight as I could because of my alignment. Now, I think a lot of times we find our, our lives like that a little bit. We, we are kind of just going in every different direction but the straight and narrow, every direction but the direction we want to go with. And may I suggest to you, we find ourselves going in different spots, we find ourselves going through these downhill habits because our life is not aligned. We're out of alignment. We're trying to go straight, but we're having a hard time. Here you go. We are what we repeatedly do. We form habits and then our habits form us. Uphill habits start with inward transformation. Romans 12, 2 puts it like this. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in God's eyes. So habit number two we're going to talk about today is keep my life aligned with my purpose. Keep my life aligned with my a per my purpose. Alignment is so important. See, you may have pain and you're trying to deal with the pain, but in reality, the pain is coming because you are out of alignment. You may, your pain may be expressed in one area, but your problem is in another area. And that's why we have to keep our purpose in alignment. Here's the good news. Here's the good news for you today. You you have a purpose. Your life has a purpose. And purpose, you know, purpose isn't just for preachers like me or people you see on TV that look like they're doing a lot or social media influencers, whoever they are, whatever they do. No, every single one of you has a God-designed purpose for your life, a God-designed purpose for your life. And your life will never, ever make sense. And it will always feel out of whack. It will always feel like you're going every other direction until you align yourself with your God-given purpose. The Psalm writer says it like this in Psalm 139, 
all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. See, this verse is saying that God uniquely designed you for a purpose. God thought about you. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake, but you are a God-designed person. Some of you might be thinking, well, if I wrote, well, 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 if God wrote my story in a book, you know, the problem is I added some chapters to that story that I wish I didn't add. And I think we all have added some chapters to the story we wish we could erase. But here's the good thing about God. Here's the good thing about God's grace. If you allow him, if you allow him, no matter, no matter what chapters you've added, he can take your chapters and he can rewrite those things, repurpose those things with his grace and his purpose and still lead you to where you need to be. Here's the good news about God. God, he doesn't give you a plan B. God gives you a new plan A. That's the great thing about God. See, look at, look at how important your purpose is. The Apostle Paul puts it like this, Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus, meaning you are uniquely designed by God. God created no one else like you. And, and why? Why did he make you? Why did he make me? Why did he make us? The Bible says this, Paul continues to says, to do good works. I love this. Not to just overwork yourself. Don't get good works confused or overworking. Overworking is not healthy and it's not biblical and it's not good for you. It is not something that Jesus would do. Not to overwork yourself. Not to just be done with, 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 with college. Not to, not to just be a mom or a dad or a spouse. Not to just go on vacations. But, but for good works. God has, God has created you to do good works. Which, check this out, which God prepared in advance for us to do, which God already thought about for you to do. See, you have a God design to your life. You have a God purpose. See, when God made you, he just didn't sit back and look at you and think, now, what am I supposed to do with this person? What am I supposed to do with them? Like God didn't say, man, this Jacob guy, he's kind of goofy looking. Maybe I'll make him work at Disney World as goofy because he's so goofy looking. No, no, God knew what he wanted to do with my life. He designed me. He designed you. He designed us. He designed everyone with a purpose. And here's, and here's the truth. There is an enemy who has been working hard to get your life out of alignment with that purpose. There's an enemy that is trying to get you out of alignment. Here you go. We need to live by design not default. We need to live by design, not default. Now what, now, what do I mean by that? So you just can't sit back and just allow things to happen to you. You can't live in default. You just can't, you can't, you can't just live like that. Like last week I talked about when storms happen in your life, a lot of times we naturally default back to our old source, some downhill habits, you know, us doing things that we swore we would never do again, we keep finding ourselves doing. Uphill habits start with inward transformation. So knowing I'm designed by God for a reason, because here's another, here's another reality, because there is competition for your time and your attention. There is competition for your time and your attention. If you don't decide how you want to live, others will decide for you. Things will decide for you. Trends will decide for you. Someone will. Here's one of the biggest lies that we have bought into as a, as a, as a country for sure is this. We need more. What a huge lie we brought into. We need more, we need more. And haven't you noticed we're, we're, buying, we're buying way too much, we work way too much, we're doing too much, we're trying to fit so much into our schedule, and, there's this, and there's this motto that the world has bought into, and it's just completely wrong, and this motto is, more is better. If you have $1, $2 is better, come on. If you have one Krispy Kreme donut, two Krispy Kreme donuts is what? Better. If you have one wife, 
the two wives is just wrong. Don't you say better. If you said better on the other side of this screen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you after this. Two wives is not better than just, okay, okay. But we believe this more, more, more. And here's the reality. An overwhelmed schedule will often produce an underwhelmed soul. An overworked schedule will often produce an underwhelmed soul. And a lot of us try to fix our problems by adding more to the to the to-do list in our already overworked schedule. And the problem is it's not aligning yourself with your purpose. You can do a bunch of things and work a whole lot of hours and not be living out your purpose, just to let you know. Purpose, your purpose is not always connected to work. Look at this very interesting verse um, in the Bible by King Solomon. Ecclesiastes 4, 6 says this, better is one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. See, we live in a world that loves to bust through the limits, reach new heights, right? Like, we, like come on, let's, we we're limitless like that horrible movie. Um, but, but I think one of the wisest things we can do, I want you to get this, lean into this. I think one of the, one of the wisest things we can do is embrace limits. Embrace limitations. Embrace limits. Like, there's a speed limit for a reason. If there is no speed limit, it would be scary to drive. You know, our bodies, we need six to eight hours of sleep. We need a limit when, when it comes to our awakeness. See, Solomon says, yeah, I have two hands. He says, I have two hands, and I, and I can fill up two, my, both of my hands with a bunch of things, but I need to limit myself using one hand and finding real Peace. See, sometimes just doing a little bit of something is better than trying to do everything. And the reason why is because time, well, time is short. Your time is short. Each day of your life, you are getting one day closer to the last day of your life. And you're welcome for that encouraging word today. I'm glad you tuned in and watched us for some encouragement. <laughs> no, but I'm being serious. For real, we all know this is true. Each day, you're one day closer to the last day of your life. And, 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 and this is kind of a problem that we have because one thing we also know is true. What you have a lot of, you tend to waste it. But what you have a little of, you will cherish it. And I want you to hear my heart today. I want you to hear what, what I'm saying to you. Your life is way too important to be wasted away on casual living. You know, one day I'll do this goal. One day I'll, I'll reach this thing. I'll start doing this. You know, you know your, your life is too important to just be complaining about everything. Just, 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 just complaining on Facebook about, about politics and ruining relationships. You, you know, just, your, your, life, your life is way too important for purposeless living. You know, James Ford puts it like this. He says, listen. Those who are boasting today or tomorrow. I love this because it's, it's just, is he saying like, you're just, just in this indecisiveness, indecisiveness. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe next year I'll do this or that. Like, it's just this casual, I'm just like, like does, does, does today really even have a purpose? He continues, he says, we'll go to another city and spend time and go into business and make heaps of profit. This is what I call the dreamer mentality. The dreamer mentality. Now, you should dream. It's good to have dreams, but, but you got to be cautious of a dreamer mentality. You have a lot of good ideas and you have a lot of good intentions, but good intentions never change the world. You got to start practicing your good intentions. You dream about being healthy while you eat a pint of ice cream. You dream about a happy marriage while you put no effort into your current marriage. You dream about dating someone while you never grow as an individual in your singleness. You dream about cleaning your house and getting things organized and in order while you binge watch another show on Netflix and you're three episodes deep. Here's what James says. But you don't have a clue what tomorrow may bring. Your time is short. You may not even have next week. For 
For your fleeting life is but a warm breath of air that is visible in the cold only for a moment and then vanishes. Instead, you should say, our tomorrows, come on, I want you to get this, our tomorrows are in the Lord's hands. And if he is willing, we will live life to the fullest and do this are that. Come on, I love that. It's saying I'm going to take ownership of my life. I'm going to take purpose. I'm going to align my life with purpose. I'm not going to wait for it someday and a one day and a one time and I might do this one day. But today I'm going to live my life to the fullest. John Maxwell says in his book, Today Matters, I will never change my life until I change something I do every day. What a great, what a great line. What a great statement. I'll never change my life until I change something I do every day. See, if we are being honest, a lot of us want change in our lives, but we don't want to change what we do every day. Let me say that one more time. I'm going to say that one more time because I want you to really feel this one. A lot of us, you, me, people around us, we want change in our lives, but we don't want to change what we do every day. If you keep doing what you are doing, you'll keep getting what you are getting. And I wanna, what I wanna do, I wanna help you master your habit of getting your life in line with God's purpose. So I wanna give you four, four things to do to help master this habit. And the first one is this, decide what's important. Decide what's important. That's a great word, important. It's time for you to decide what's important because if we're being honest, A lot of us, our lives aren't being defined by the important things in our lives. Our lives are being defined by just the urgent things, the things that we just got to do right now because we waited last minute to do do something else. Oftentimes, our lives are being defined by someone else's agenda and task that we allow to come in to our calendar. See, I don't think there's anyone who's on their deathbed that says, that says, please give me one more hour in the office. I don't think anyone is saying that when, when they're dying. But here's, but here's what I am trying to say to you. You can't, and I can't, we can't lose our priorities. We cannot lose our priorities. See, there is this guy that got, that, uh, got Super Bowl tickets. He, he got Super Bowl tickets, perfect seats, right at the 50 yard line. You know, so he's, he's seeing all the action. And, um, and he sat there and next to him was an empty seat. You know, he sat there and next to him was an empty seat. So a guy in the same row said, say, hey, who are you waiting for? You know, the game's going on. Who are you waiting for to sit next to you? And the guy said, well, I'm not waiting. It was my wife's um, seat and it was my wife and I's dream to, to see the Super Bowl together. But unfortunately, she, she, she died. She passed away. And then the other guy said, oh, man, that's that's great that you bought a seat in, in, uh, in memory of her. You know, that's what it was so meaningful. But, man, you could have sold it. I mean, these tickets are worth a lot of money. So these tickets are worth are worth thousands of dollars. Or, or maybe you did, did you have any family you could have brought with you? And, and it sat with a family member next to you. And the other guy said, yeah, I couldn't bring any any family with me to, to take the seat. And the guy was like, well, why? Why not? And the other guy said, well, because they're all at my wife's funeral, funeral right now. <laughs> this guy has his priorities all wrong, man. He has his priorities all out of whack. That's a joke. That didn't really happen. I mean, it may have happened. But, but, but seriously, see, oftentimes we have our priorities out of line. They're out of whack. Paul says it like this, Philippians 3. But whatever was to my profit, let me paraphrase this. Paul is saying, everything I thought that was important, everything that I deemed as important, actually isn't all that important. He continues, he says, now I consider loss for the sake of Christ, which is more. I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus. I love that he says the the surpassing greatness. In other words, the things I thought were great were not as great as knowing who I am in God and having my life aligned with that. You want to know what a really great life is? You want to know what a great life is? It's living a life that's making a difference in someone else's life. That's what a great life is. Being a parent that doesn't overwork 
over, overwork and you don't spend proper time with your family. Being a friend who listens to your other friends, not just having a one-way relationship. Being a spouse that selflessly gives to your spouse. Paul says, for, for my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. See, one thing I learned from 2020 was that my family is the most important thing to me. And a lot of you may be like, well, yeah, of course. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows their family is the most important thing to them. Like, that's, that's common news, Jacob. That's common. You didn't know that already? Oh, you just now discovering that? Yeah, yeah, you know, you may know something. But just because you know something, do your actions communicate what you know? See, I'm going to decide what's important and align my time, my treasure, and my talent to those things, which leads me to my second thought. Give calendar time to important things. Give calendar time to important things. See, you may know something is important. You may know, you may know something should be a priority, but you don't see that priority or you don't see that value anywhere in your calendar time. It amazes me how many people say they value something, but it doesn't show up on their calendar. If you value something, you'll make time for it. If you value your marriage, date night is a must. See, obviously in our world today, you know, dinner and a movie, going out to the movies isn't, isn't an easy thing to do. It's not possible, I don't think, at all right now. But, but, no, but you wanna know what Aaron and I did, no matter how cheesy it may sound, we started buying puzzles. We started buying puzzles and we would, we, would, we would make puzzles and I would download 25 questions to ask your spouse. And, and we would just make puzzles and ask questions and have intentional conversations. And those date nights are some of the best date nights that we ever had, even more so than spending $100 on getting the dinner. See, if you value your family, you'll put, you'll put that in your calendar time to do it. So Aaron and I with Kingsley on every Friday and Saturday morning, we do family fun day. We do family fun day. So Aaron and I, we put our phones away. We don't answer calls and we devote our entire attention to our family, to, to Kingsley. We play games. Aaron and Kingsley bake cookies together. And it's gotten to the point when Kingsley now, she will wake up on Friday morning and she will say, is today family fun day? Like, like it's now starting to be a, a culture in our family that, we, that our family is a priority to our time. And I'm like, heck yeah, Kingsley, it is family fun day. See, Psalm 90 puts it like this. Teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us spend them as we should. Are you spending your days as you should? Are you spending your days as you should? Are you just wasting time? Are you wasting time on things that you don't need to waste time on? Let me put it this way, a problem I see because we often respond to the urgent and not the important. Sometimes we go all in on something and then we exhaust ourselves. We go all in on something and then we exhaust our ourselves. For example, like, like exercising our diets in, like exercising and going on a diet. You see so many people who go on these crazy fad diets like, like, like keto and, and whatnot. And, and what happens is, yeah, at first you may get some results. You're like, man, this keto diet is working. I'm getting some, res some results. The problem is because it's such a just an urgent, you go all out, the diet is not sustainable. And so what happens? When you, once you stop doing it, you gain even more weight after, after so. Working out. Some people say, man, I want to get fit. So I'm going to wake up every day at six in the morning and go running and go to the gym and I'm going to do this. And you may go twice. You may go twice. But then you recognize you're not even a morning person. So why are you waking up at six in the morning trying to go hard at the gym when that's not even a good time for you to do it? I'll make it even more personal. Here you go, I'll make it more personal. Your spouse communicates a problem. Your spouse communicates a problem to you. So what do you do? You go and you respond to the urgent, urgent problem and you buy flowers and a card and it's real lovely and, and you make up and it's great. But guess what? Fast forward six, seven, eight months down the road in that time span, you didn't buy one flower or one card and now you're back to the same problem that you, that you had. See, what I wanna suggest to you 
is what is what you, what you can call the rule of five. The rule of five. Now this now I'm gonna be honest with you. This is something very recent. I've been adding to my life, so I haven't mastered it yet. But I'm already seeing results from it, so I want to share it with you. You know, so the, the best way I can illustrate it is kind of like this. It's kind of like if you had an axe, right? If you had an axe and you went outside to to chop down a tree, if you hit that tree five times, one, two, three, four, five. See, that fast. If you hit that tree five times over a period of time, if you hit that tree five times every day over a period of time, that tree will eventually fall down. That tree will eventually fall down over time. However, what we tend to do, what I've used to do for a long time in my life, what we tend to do is, is we say, man, I gotta chop down this tree right now. So we hurry up and we grab our ax and we go outside and we just start banging away, just banging away at the tree, just going in on the tree. And after a moment, after, after a little while, you're exhausted, your shoulders are burning, you know, you're breathing, you're breathing all heavy because you're just chopping away at the tree. And then you look at the tree and you missed it. You never hit the tree one time or you got a little dent into it. And now you're exhausted and, and, and you don't even want to hit the tree anymore. And so here's, here you go. This is what I'm saying to you. The rule of five, the rule of five is saying doing five things at least once every day. And that will get you the results that you want. Not just going all in. I'm, going, I'm working out at the gym. I'm not eating pasta ever again. Oh, I'm, I'm giving this up. Just five things, once a day, every day. And over time, you start to create a habit in your life of doing these things. Now, I encourage you to create your own five. Here's, here's what I do. Here are five things that I try to do every day and, and not really in any certain order, but five things I try to do every day, at least once a day, is this. Spend daily time with God. I try to spend daily time with God. The second thing is I work out. Exercise is important. My physical health and my mental health is so important. Third thing is I tell my wife and kids, I love you. So I'm not just hanging out with them, but I want to look right at them and tell them, I love you. You know, that's something I try to do. The fourth thing is take care of myself. So making sure I'm doing soul care, making sure I'm, I, you know, I'm spending time with God, making sure I'm not overworking myself. And then the last thing I try to do is look for a way to make a difference in someone's life. And that one can kind of feel a little daunting or like, like, well, you know, I'm at home all the time. Like, where, how am I supposed to make a difference in my life? And hey, that can be something that simple as sending a card to someone that you're thinking about. It can be sending a text message to someone and saying, hey, I'm praying for you. Hope you're doing good. But every day trying to make a difference in someone's life. Now imagine with me for a second. Imagine if you did something like this every day of your life, how big of a difference would that make in your life? And over time, over time, that tree will eventually fall down. And now you're not exhausted, you're not overworked. It's five little things. Here you go. This leads me to this, make time for renewal. And this is why it's so important that you gotta make time for renewal. You gotta refresh yourself. You gotta refresh yourself. We got parents out here watching right now who are working and teaching their kids at school at the same time. We got teenagers out here trying to make it through high school on a Zoom call. We got college students out here trying to be nurses and they can't even touch a person. You know, you got a lot going on right now. And, and what I recommend you to do is, is you have to start the practice of a Sabbath. You have to start a practice of a Sabbath where you slow down. It's time to slow down in our lives. You know, see, that's actually what our family fun day is. We call it family fun day because I don't think a two-year-old will understand what the word Sabbath means, but, but, but our family fun day is a Sabbath. It's a Sabbath. Not only do we play games and, and make fun food and things like that, but we pray together as a family. We invite the Holy Spirit to come into our family. On Saturday mornings, I practice what's called silence and solitude, where I'll just sit before the Lord in, in silence with no music, no noise, and, and, I, and it's just the stillness of my breath and the presence of the Lord with me. You know, and, and so, so here you go. This is what I wanna say. God principles work. God principles work. 
You can get more done in six days than working as hard as you can in seven days. You gotta take that one day and say, I'm gonna give it to the Lord. Now, I'm going to devote another series in the future to, Sab to Sabbath and what that means. But if you want some tips on Sabbath, make sure you fill out a connect card or personally um, DM me and I'll give you some tips on, 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 on what, it, what we do for Sabbath and things like that. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I am going to be having a baby um, after this video was recorded. So I may not get back to you right away. We do have a baby now. Um, but but I would love to give you some tips on Sabbath. Sabbath because it's not binge watching TV or just laying around all day. There is some practical things that you that you can do. Okay, so it's it, but it's time for renewal. It's time for renewal. Second Corinthians four says this. Therefore, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Uphills habits start with inward transformation. Next thing is make time for relationships. Next week, Isaiah, my brother, will be talking about relationships. And I just, just want to throw this out to you real fast. Small groups will start January, the week of January 25th. Be on the lookout for in-person and online groups. You know, you know, healthy relationships are so important for your growth. And then the last thing, the last thing I want to say about this is make time for, for reward. Make time for reward. See, I'm not just talking about vacation trips, but you should reward yourself with a vacation. I'm not talking about just breaks or relax, re, having relaxed days, so you should have those things. But I'm talking about heavenly rewards. Make time in your calendar for heavenly rewards. Make time for doing something with your life that makes an everlasting impact. Like one day, we will all stand before God and God's going to want to know, how did you leverage your life to advance his kingdom? He's going to want to know. And I'm telling you this, living a life for Jesus, spending that extra time with that friend who needs help, you know, spending that extra time giving someone support, even though, even though you may not have all the support to give, but going that extra mile with someone when they're in need. I mean, that's meaningful for the kingdom. And even... You know, this year we're going to go back to in-person services, Be, being on the dream team, serving on the dream team. That's making time for heavenly rewards in your life. So make times, okay? All right, I'm going to go through these last two pretty fast. The third one is this, eliminate non-essentials. It's time to eliminate non-essentials. A lot of us have non-essentials in our lives. And here's the truth. We have to eliminate them. We have to get rid of the non-essential, the things that are not priority that we have been living for so long as if it's the priority in our lives. They don't really belong in our lives. Hebrews 12, 1 says this, let us throw off everything that hinders. So it's about time to get rid of those hindering things. Maybe social media, maybe screen time, maybe if you're a Cowboys fan, it's time to get, get rid of that. And, and, you know, and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. It's time to get rid of the things that keep holding us down and going after the things that are leading us to uphill ha habit. And my fourth and final thing, regularly take inventory. It's time for you to regularly take inventory of your life. See, because if you don't take inventory, Things are going to come at you from every angle. And what will happen, it will bring you out of alignment. It will bring you out of alignment, friends. We got to take inventory. Even right now, since I got you watching on the screen, right now, just start to dial down a little bit. Start to breathe a little bit. Just maybe you're watch, listening to me while you're cleaning in the kitchen or doing something. Just, first, just pause what you're doing. Just start taking inventory right now. What's that nagging thing? What's that thing that keeps coming into your life that you know you don't need anymore? What's that problematic addiction that you've been hiding from people that you need to confess and get healing from? What's that thing causing pain in your life and truthfully it's just throwing you out of alignment? If you were to let go of the steering wheel of your life, you would drift hard to the right. You would get, you would not stay straight. And God is sitting next to you right now saying, hey, you just need an alignment. You just need an alignment. Your life is not about to break down. Come on, I feel like some, God's speaking to some people right now. Your life 
You feel like it's on the edge. You feel like you don't know if you're going to make it. Things haven't gone the way you really wished it was going to go. You're, you're dealing with issues that you can't believe. And, and there's this things going on. Your life is not about to break down. You're just out of alignment. You're just out of alignment a little bit. And God wants you to do right now is to take inventory of your life and say those things that keep pulling me this way or that way, I want them no more. Psalms 39 says this, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are number, that my life is fleeing away. My life is no longer than the width of my hand. An eternal lifetime is just a moment to you. Human existence is just, is but a breath. See, it's time right now. It's time right now to live life to the fullest. And there's other things that are trying to steal your joy or disrupt your peace. It's time to develop a habit to take inventory of your life and align your life with the God purpose. Because uphill habits start with inward transformation. So Jesus, we come to you right now. We come to you and we say, we need you. You know the nagging things in our life. You know the things that keep bringing us out of alignment. And we surrender those things to you right now. We surrender to you. And we say, keep us aligned with your purpose. Keep us aligned with, with what you have for our lives. I even feel right now, listen people, yeah, you're, you're holding tight to the steering wheel. And I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying, just you need to let it go and allow God to, to fix that alignment. You can't, you're holding on so tight. Oh, if I do this, I'm doing, I'm doing this. You're doing things on your own strength. And I feel like God is saying, it's time to release those things to him. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. God, we, we surrender our purpose to you. And we ask that we can walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen.